Galapagos. It is known as the world's greatest natural laboratory for giving and sustaining life to a multitude of diverse species. These remote and isolated islands that straddle the equator are over 600 miles off the coast of Ecuador in South America. In 1959, responding to a growing concern of the environmental and scientific importance of the archipelago, Ecuador designated 97% of the 3,088 square miles of land area of Galapagos as a natural park. In 1986, the water around the Galapagos Islands was listed as protected territory. This sanctuary is ideal habitat for billfish. Traveling 3,000 miles from their home in Avalon, California, the captain and crew of the Kelsey Lee are on a mission to study billfish migrations in these warm southern waters of the Pacific Ocean. This is the Galapagos Expedition. Conservationist Packy Offield has a particular passion for billfish and his goal with his expedition is to help advance our understanding of the species, as well as its conservation. The mission statement uh, is much broader, but basically what we want to try to do is as much good science that we possibly can do for all species of billfish around the world. On this expedition, Anglers and scientists are combining efforts to uncover the mystery of the declining striped marlin. They will attempt to accurately study migrations because studying fish movement can ultimately lead to the ability to define and understand fish populations. The striped marlin is a pelagic billfish and has been documented to travel over 31 miles a day. Up to 13 feet in length, the fish is found in the warm waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Today, the striped marlin is sought as a trophy by many anglers, but the commercial fishing industry also has a price on its head. The Galapagos has supported historically high catch rates of striped marlin, and its central location in the eastern Pacific could make it an important mixing zone for northern and southern hemisphere fish, should such mixing actually occur. Being in the Galapagos Islands, there are, are two different types of currents that come up, one from the north and one from the south. This could be a very important stopping off point uh, for fish on their way to, say, the Marquesas Islands, uh, further on into the Pacific or it's possible that these fish are a residential fish. As a passionate conservationist, Packy has had a custom boat built. The Kelsey Lee has a lighter hull, enabling it to burn far less fuel than a typical vessel its size, which will enable the crew of scientists and anglers to successfully conduct this expedition while still minimizing their own environmental impact. In many ways, the captain and crew of the Kelsey Lee are continuing in the tradition of Darwin. As he first tried to study and understand the origins of life on Earth over 150 years ago, 
Packy Offield and his crew are now using 21st century technology to go beyond just understanding species, but also conserving them. They plan to do this by playing tag, so to speak. We have seven people that we bring down uh, in addition to myself, so there's eight of us in all when we do tagging. We have anglers who know how to catch the fish and catch the fish properly. Uh, we have people who know how to handle the fish well um, and get them on board, uh, do the surgery, do the proper measurements, take the DNA, and handle all of those samples properly. In my crew, all of these guys have done all of the tagging with me. I'm very proud of the fact that we have, to date, 100% post-release survivorship for those tags that we've put out. New technology has enabled amazing advancements in the analysis of animal behavior and patterns. Using this technology to study fish movement can ultimately lead to the ability to define fish populations. We have uh, three different tags that we're putting out on this particular trip. The first one is called the spot tag. There are really only three of them, but that gives us, a, for about a 30-day period of time, the ability to track um, the marlin that we put it in um, around, probably going to be staying around the Galapagos Islands. So we'll get a 30-day picture, and it, and it gives us a, a mark every single time it hits the surface. So we'll have uh, close-up information about what their pattern of, uh, of uh, migration is over a 30-day period of time. The next type of tag we put out is called the PSAT, which is a, uh, stands for a pop-off satellite archival tag. And these are the tags that you read about that uh, uh, after a certain period of time that's programmed by the scientists, these tags come off, they record a certain amount of information. We get to have daylight, uh, amount of daylight, so we know uh, where, when the fish is feeding, what depth they're feeding. Um, what the water temperature is, and we can glean from those kinds of information um, where the fish has been. So we'll be able to approximate a latitude and longitude from the PSAT tags. They are generally three months, six months, nine months, even up to a year, although we're having trouble with the satellite tag staying on the fish for that period of time. The third tag that we have is what we call strictly an archival tag. The archival tags are really perhaps the most difficult where you have to bring the fish in as quickly as possible. Uh, we have found that there is a uh, better survivorship of these uh, magnificent fish if you get them to the boat and uh, get them released as quickly as you possibly can. So we were using 50 pound test um, mono to bring the fish in to the boat and we were generally getting them, I would say our average was somewhere around 12 minutes um, for each of the fish that we brought in. Some were a little bit longer than that, some were coming in in six or seven minutes. So you have a pretty green fish that's coming to the boat, um, which creates its own set of problems. But once it's next to the boat, then we have to grab the bill, open the door, slide the fish on a, 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 a plastic bed, uh, bring them into the boat. At that point, what we're going to do is the, put a towel over his eye, which calms him down, and we measure him. We uh, take a DNA sample, we put a spaghetti tag uh, in the fish, which gives the information about a $500 reward. And then at the same time that all of that is going on, one person is putting the uh, archival tag into the fish. He makes a uh, incision about an inch long. Uh, he puts a, a steel, a probe in that allows us to break in through the stomach wall into the stomach cavity 
and put the satellite tag there, then he stitches it up and we put the fish back. It generally takes us about two minutes to put these tags out, get the fish back in the water where we'll revive them and release them. We have found out over time, because we've done a lot of post-release survivorship studies, bringing the fish in quickly, releasing it the way that we do, handling it the way that we do, um, these fish have almost 100% uh, survivability after they've been released by our crew here on the Kelsey League.